Hi everyone, welcome to your lesson four for year three's math this week. Today we're going to be looking at giving change. For this lesson, I'd like to make sure that you've got a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil so that you can work out the answer some questions as we go along and we'll pause the video in different places so that I can do some work, you can do some work and then we can see how you've got on the different questions. So we'll start. So we'll start with this question. So Mo buys a chocolate bar for 65p. How much change does he get from a pound? Now, the whole way through this week, we keep coming back to this really important fact, and that is the fact that one pound is the same as 100 pence. So whenever somebody pays with a one pound coin, that's the same as if they were paying with 100 pence. So Mo has paid for his chocolate bar with one pound or 100 pence. We want to know how much change that he gets. Now, if the chocolate bar costs 65 pence and he pays with a pound, we're trying to find the difference or the gap between those two amounts of money. And we always like to do that on number line. The reason being that it's much easier for you to jump and to find the little gaps between numbers than it would be if you were trying to do it using a column method or in your head. So if we think about Mo's chocolate bar, we know he paid for 65 pence. We know that he spent, he paid for it with a pound. We want to try and jump up from the amount we're starting to, which in this case is 65 pence, to the next 10 pence. So as if you were counting in tens. And the next 10 pence after 65p would be 70p. And I can use my number bonds loads of this to help me work out the steps I'm going to take. So if I know my number bonds, I know that 5 and 5 is 10, or 5 out of 5 is 10. So that I can add 5p to my 65p to get me to the next 10p. So in this case, 65p add 5p is going to take me to 70p. And I'm now going to jump from 70p up to the pound. Well, as we've just mentioned, a pound is actually the same as saying 100 pence. So really, I'm jumping from 70p to 100p. And again, I can use my number ones. I know that 7 add 3 is 10 which means I also know that 70 add 30 equals 100. So a jump of 30p will take me from my 70p up to my one pound. Okay, so we've used our number ones, we've jumped from the next to the next 10 pence, then up to the next pound. Now all together, I have jumped a five pence and a 30 pence. Now I know that five add 30 is 35, so I can see that the answer to my question is 35 pence. So Mo buys his chocolate bar for 65p. He pays with a one pound coin or 100 pence and he gets 35 pence change. Here's another question. So Whitney this time has five pounds. She spends three pounds and 60 pence. How much change will she receive? So she spends five pounds, and again, we know that five pounds is the same as having 500 pence, but I'm not going to write it down unless I need to. And again, on my number line, I'm starting from my three pounds 60, and I want to jump all the way to the five pounds. Now, on our last question, we jumped up to the next multiple of 10. In this case, I'm actually already on a multiple of 10, so there's no need for me to jump to another tens number. Instead, I can jump straight to the next whole pound. So the next whole pound after three pounds would be four pounds. And again, I can use my number ones to help me. I know that 60 add 40 is a pound. So that I know I can jump from three pounds 60 to four pounds by adding on 40 pence. Because remember, four pounds is the same as 400 pence. And 60 add 40 gives me 100. From four pounds, I can then jump to five pounds, which is a jump of one pound. So I've done 40p to go from three pounds 60 to four pounds, then a pound from four pounds to five pounds. And in total, that is one pound and 40 pence. So if we look back at our question, Whitney had five pounds. She spends three pounds and 60 pence. Well, how much change does she get? She gets one pound and 40 pence change. So here's where I'd like you to pause the video. Anyway, that you see this little pause in the corner. I'll read the question first so you can understand it. We'll go through it, we'll pause it, you can have a go at it, and then we'll go through the answers together to see how you've got on. So Tommy buys a comic for three pounds and 25 pence. 
he pays with a five pound note. How much change will he receive? So Tommy buys a comic for three pounds and 25 pence. He pays with a five pound note. How much change will he receive? So pause the video, have a little go on your piece of paper or your whiteboard and then play the video and we'll see how you've got them. Okay, so you've had a little bit of time to think through your answer and to work it out. Let's see if we've got the same answers. So here is my number line. Again, I've started with three pounds and 25 pence because that's where, uh, what Tommy has spent. And I'm jumping all the way up to five pounds, which is the amount that he paid with. Now, because I'm on a three pounds and 25 pence, I'm gonna jump to the next multiple of 10 or the next 10 pence, which is three pounds and 30 pence. Well, using my number bonds again, I know that five add five gets me to 10. So a jump of five pence will get me to three pounds and 30 pence. And now I want to jump from three pounds 30 to four pounds. And again, remembering four pounds is the same as 400 pence. Well, number one's 10, three and seven is 10. So 30 and 70 will take me to the next pound. So I've got a jump of 70 pence and a jump of five pence. And I'm on four pounds. I want to jump from four pounds to the next whole pound, which is five pounds and the total we're trying to get to. Well, four pounds add one pound, it gets me to my five pounds. But that in itself isn't going to be the answer to my question. I need to add the jumps together to work out the total amount of change that Tommy buys, Tommy gets when he buys his comic. So one pound of 70p is one pound and 70p. Add the 5p is one pound and 75 pence. So hopefully you did okay with that one. Now, some of you may not need to do these smaller jumps. Okay, some of you might be able to jump straight from say 25p up to the next pound. If your number one's to 100 are brilliant and that's fantastic, you can do that. If you need to jump in those slightly smaller steps, that's absolutely fine as well. You can use whichever method you find a little bit easier. So if we move on, here's another one for you to have a little go at. So Eva buys a train for six pounds and 55p. She pays with a 10 pound note. How much change will she receive? So Eva buys a train for six pounds and 55 pence. She pays with a 10 pound note. How much change will she receive? Okay, so I want you to pause the video here and have a go. What change does Eva get from her 10 pound note? Okay, let's have a little look and see how we've got on. So at the start of my number line, I've got the six pounds and 55 pence, which is what Eva spent on her train. And I'm jumping all the way up to 10 pounds, which is the amount that she paid with. So again, I've done a smaller jump from 55 pence up to the next multiple of 10, which in this case is six pounds and 60 pence. These are my number ones. Well, I know five add five is 10. So a jump of five pence will take me to six pounds and 60 pence. Now I'm going to go from six pounds and 60 pence to seven pounds. And I know that using my number ones again, that 60 at 40 is going to get me to the next pound because six and four is 10. So a jump of 40 pence. Now a little bit harder this time, I'm going from my seven pounds to 10 pounds. But again, if you know your number ones, we know that seven add three is 10. But make sure that you know whether you're jumping up in pence or whether you're jumping up in pounds. Because if I had to put three pence here, that's obviously not the same as three pounds. And again, I can add up to find my total three pounds at 40 pence. Add five pence gives me a total of three pounds and 45 pence. So well done if you got that one correct. Going to have a little look at a slightly different question this time. OK, so Tom buys a teddy. He pays with a five pound note and he gets two pounds and 40 pence change. How much did the teddy cost? So the reason this one is slightly different is rather than saying that this is how much his item costs and how much change does he get, we'll just flip it around the other way. So this time we're giving you how much change the person gets and you've got to work out how much it costs. But really we can do it in exactly the same way as we did before. So again, if I know that he gets two pounds and 40 pence change, I can find the difference between two pounds and 40 pence and five pounds. So I'm going to jump up to my next multiple of 10. But actually, I'm already on a multiple of 10, so I don't need to do that. I can jump up to my next whole pounds. 
So next whole pound after two pound is going to be a jump up to three pounds. I swear my number one's coming again. What do I add to 40 to get to 100? Well, four add six is 10. So 40 add 60 must get me to my next pound. So this first one is a jump of 60 pence. And I'm now gonna jump from three pounds all the way up to five pounds. Well, that's nice and easy. The difference between three pounds and five pounds is going to be two pounds. Again, once I've done my jumps, I can add them together to find my total, which is gonna be a jump of two pounds and 60 pence. So the teddy bear that Tom bought cost him two pounds and 60 pence. And you've got this two pounds and 40 pence change. So here are two similar ones for you to have a little go at. Again, where you find the change, it's, you've been given the amount of change and we want to find out how much the items cost. The first one is Alice buys an ice cream. She pays with a two pound coin. She gets 75 pence change. How much did the ice cream cost? And the second one, Ben buys a new ball. He pays with a 10 pound note. He gets three pounds and 50 pence change. How much did the ball cost? So wait to pause the video, have a little go at those two questions, and then we'll come back together and see how you got them. Okie dokie, so we'll start off with Alice and her ice cream. So she pays with a two pound coin and she gets 75 pence change. Well, on my number line, that means I'm gonna start with my 75 pence and I'm gonna jump up to my next pound. Now I've done this in one slightly bigger jump because I know that 75p at 25p is gonna get me to my one pound or my 100 pence. But you may have done a slightly smaller jump where you may have jumped to 80 pence and then from 80 pence to a pound. And again, that's absolutely fine. And then from one pound to two pound is a jump of a pound. And whichever method you use, you should have got the answer of one pound and 25 pence. We then have a look at Ben and his new ball. So he pays um, with a £10 note and he gets £3.50 change. So on this number line, at the start, you should have had £3.50. And at the end, you should have had £10. And we're going to jump up again. So in this case, again, there's no need to jump to the next multiple of 10 because we're already on a 10 pence. Well, 50p at 50p is going to get me to the next pound because 5 at 5 is 10. So 50 at 50 is 100. So that first one's a jump of 50 pence. Then from four pounds to 10 pounds, well, four at six is 10. So we know it's a jump of six pounds. Six pounds at 50 pence gives you a total of six pounds and 50 pence. How'd you get on with those? Hopefully you did okay. Let's have a look at another different type of question. So this was a little bit more complicated. So drinks cost one pound and 90 pence. Snacks cost one pound and 20 pence. Jasmine buys a drink and a snack and she pays with a five pound note. How much change does she get? Now, the reason this one's a little bit tricky is there's an extra step for you to work out. Instead of being told how much money Jasmine spent in total, we need to work it out. And we need to do that by adding together the cost of the two items that she bought. Well, we know she bought a drink and she knows she cost, bought a snack. So one of those cost £1.90 and the other one cost £1.20. So we need to add them together. So the easy way to do it is if I think, well, one pound add one pound is going to be two pounds. So I can jot that down there to help me out. So that's the one pound and the one pound gives me two pounds. I've then got to add together the amount that she had in pence. Well, 90 pence add 20 pence. Well, 90 pence add 20 pence is going to be 110 pence. But actually, I know what 110 pence is in pounds, don't I? Because I know that if 100 pence is one pound, then 110 pence is actually going to be the same as one pound and 10 pence. So I know that all together, she spent a two pounds and a one pound 10 pence. So all together, that gets me an absolute total that Jasmine spent of three pounds and 10 pence. But my question's not over. I haven't started to work out how much change she got. All I've done is that first step of trying to work out actually how much did she spend in total. So now that I've got that, I can think about drawing my number line. And again, I'm trying to find the difference between the total that she spent, which we now know is three pounds and 10 pence, which I'll put down here. 
and jumping all the way up to the amount that we know she paid with, which in this case is a five pound note. Okay, so I'm starting with three pounds and 10 pence. I'm already on a multiple of 10, so I don't need to jump to another multiple of 10, but I can jump straight to the next whole pound. So from three pounds and 10 pence, I'm gonna jump to four pounds. And again, using my number bar knowledge, I know that 10 as 90 takes me to 100. So my first jump is a jump of 90 pence. And that's taking me from three pounds and 10 pence to four pounds. And then from four pounds to five pounds, it's gonna be a jump of one pound. And again, like we've done with all the other questions, all I've got to do now is add together the one pound and the 90 pence to give me a total amount of change that Jasmine gets. It's one pound and 90 pence. Okay, so just remember the questions like these, that sometimes you need to work out the total amount spent. So there's that extra step in there before you can work out how much change somebody got. So here's one for you to have a little go at. So bouncy balls cost one pound and 50 pence. Yo-yos cost two pounds and 30 pence. Tom buys a bouncy ball and a yo-yo and he pays with a five pound note. How much change does he get? So wait to pause the video, have a little go, make sure you add together the amounts that Tom um, spends and then find out how much change he gets in total. Okay, should we go through it together? Let's have a little look. So, Tom buys a bouncy ball and a yo-yo. So we know that the bouncy ball costs £1.50 and the yo-yos cost £2.30. If I add together my pound coins, well, £1 and £2 is going to be £3. And then I can deal with the pence. 50 pence add 30 pence is 80 pence. So the total amount that Tom spends on his yo-yo and his bouncy ball is three pounds and 80 pence. So that's the amount that I'm gonna put at the start of my number, so three pounds and 80 pence. And we know that he pays with a five pound note. So again, a five pound note is gonna go at the end. And I can think about doing my jumps. Well, I'm already on a multiple of 10, because I'm at 80, so I can jump straight to the next pound, which in this case, again, is four pounds. So using my number ones, what do I add to 80 to get to the next pound? Hopefully you got that that is a jump of 20 pence. From four pounds to five pounds is a simple jump of one pound. And then you can find your total for one pound and 20 pence. It's gonna give you a total of one pound and 20 pence. How do you go on that one? Did you get it right? I hope you did. So. All the questions that we've done today have all come back to using this number line. Number lines are really, really important. You might be able to do it in your head, but it's always really good to show that working out and that jottings. And when we say this all the time in class, because you might accidentally make a mistake. And sometimes if you've done that in your head, you can't work out where you've gone wrong. If you've done it on number line, you can really see the steps that you're taking. You can see the number bonds, making sure that you make sure that you get the right bonds to the next pound or to the next 10 pence to find your total. So today you're going to have lots of questions, all to do with finding different amounts of change. Keep coming back to your number line and make sure you remember that really important fact that, 10, that one pound is the same as 100 pence.